With the first pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Allen Iverson from Georgetown University. And there you see backstage Allen Iverson, the Georgetown sophomore. Ann and Steve, mom and dad. Family and friends back there. And what a tremendous moment that is for a kid. You think about all the nights, all the mornings that you had to get up early, take the kid to his youth league game, and dreaming of this night, of being the first pick in the NBA draft. And it has happened for Allen Iverson. His mom, and there is David Falk, who should figure prominently into the... He seems very happy. Yes, <laughs> that's a matter of fact. You can't hide that smile. Wearing the hat of the Philadelphia 76ers, Allen Iverson. You know that with the basketball from end to end, there's no one in the league going to be quicker. Plus, you, you know because of the explosiveness that he can break you down from a defensive standpoint. And a major plus with this guy, he gets to the foul line. And uh, pretty good ups on the guy, too. And I have a feeling he hasn't come down yet, even though he is with our Craig Sager right now. Craig. All right, Alan, congratulations. Hubie Brown says there's nobody in the league quicker than you. Is there anybody that can stop you one-on-one? -on -one? I don't know. I, I hope not. Um, I don't think so. You've pretty well been able to do whatever you want on the court in high school and in college. What have the Sixers told you they expect from you? Um, they just want me to come in and play my game. Um, you know, distribute the ball. There's great players already on the team, Stackhouse and Derek Coleman. Um, it would be crazy to think that I would come in and try to take all the shots uh, like I did at Georgetown. But um, I think we have a good game plan. And uh, we got a great coach and a great staff. No, I'm looking forward to it. You mentioned great players. Derek Coleman obviously is one of them. If you talk to him, how do you get the best out of his game? I haven't talked to him, but, um, you know, they lost some games last year a lot. And uh, I know they want to just dig deep down the side and uh, bring everything out that they got and win some games. And all I want to do is win. And that whole staff and the organization, they just want to win. Congratulations. You're number one. All right. Thanks a lot. With the second pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Toronto Raptors select Marcus Camby from the University of Massachusetts. Well, there's a the guy Rick Pitino said should have gone first. He'll take number two, though. Marcus Camby of UMass. Coming out after his junior year, college player of the year, led UMass to the final four. Back face Rick Pitino's bunch right here at Continental Airlines Arena. Well, it's all based on needs and what a team needs, and certainly Allen Iverson has the ability to make the 76ers a, a great ball club. But this young man has what all NBA teams look for. He's a shot blocker. He's extremely quick. He has a great low post game, and if you try to double down on him, he finds all the open men. So this young man has fabulous potential in Toronto, really, with Stoudemire and now Camby. They've got a great future that lies ahead. Yeah, the Raptors had the Rookie of the Year in Damon Stoudemire, Mighty Mouse, a year ago, and now they'll make their bid for that award again with Marcus Camby. There's his mom, Janice, backstage, and there's big Marcus. Marcus, first of all, after all that's happened the last few weeks, the moment has finally arrived. Any way to describe what you've had to go through? It's been difficult, but, you know, I had a lot of support back home from Hartford, and um, back home, a lot of people didn't want to see Marcus Cameron succeed, but I had strong friends on my, my project in the penthouse of W Square. I had great support from the cartel back there in the back, and, um, you know, everything's been great. A lot of players, we say we have to wait to develop. You already made an immediate impact. What position, your talents, where are they suited in the NBA? Um, People question, you know, what position I'll play at three, four, or five. Um, I can see myself just as a player. Just get me out there on the court and just let me play. Isaiah Thomas has proven he knows what he's doing. Last year, Damon Stoudemire. Have you met Damon? Have you played against Mighty Mouse? Oh, yeah, I met him in my work. I would play one on one. But uh, he beat me 5 4, but I, I couldn't back him in. So um, you know, he's a heck of a point guard. You know, any big man would love playing with Damon. Rookie of the year, two years in a row, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Let's go back to the set. With the third pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, 
the Vancouver Grizzlies select Sharif Abdurrahim from the University of California. The earliest a freshman has ever gone in the NBA draft, Sharif Abdurrahim, a high schooler in Marietta, Georgia, played his freshman year, his only year of college ball at the University of California. High fives all around backstage as the Cal freshman makes his way to meet Commissioner David Stern. The Pac-10 Player of the Year is a freshman. And the first freshman since Cliff Robinson in 1978 to lead the conference in scoring. Amina Abdulrahim, his mother, with the tears. You see a lot of that backstage on draft night. With the fourth pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Stephon Marbury from Georgia Tech University. And pandemonium reigns backstage. Got to steal Vince Cellini's line, the traveling Marbury. He's got a family of basketball players. And I can recall as a Cub radio reporter in 1970s covering his brother Eric Marbury, Sky Dog, they called him at the University of Georgia. And Stefan Marbury, really living a dream for that entire family, hoping that somebody would make an impact in the NBA, get their name called on this night. And there is Stefan Marbury. It's not just moms who shed a tear on this night. Well, Stefan, it's always an emotional scene in the back room there when you get drafted. But I tell you, when we saw your family sitting there hugging everybody, the tears coming to your mother Mabel's eyes, tears coming down your face. Did anybody in your family sleep last night? What was it like? I can't even, I can't even explain the way I feel right now. It's been 20 years. 20 long years. We here for this day. It's here. It's here now. Can I take your hat off a second? What has this been talked about in your family? What has it been like? I mean, you, you sit around a long time after the night, just sitting there thinking about when that day was going to come. And for it to be here now, it just feels so good. I can put a proof and a smile on my mother's face. Also buy that greenhouse for a plant. Oh yeah, she might have that nice big greenhouse. <laughs> of course. Last night we talked about the NBA. We said New York has leaders, politics, point guards. What does an NBA point guard mean to you? What's the definition? A leader, a person that's gonna make everyone around him better, sacrifice, do everything that it takes to win. Well, the Marberries have arrived. Nice talking to the Starberry. Congratulations. Good luck. All right. With the fifth pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Ray Allen from the University of Connecticut. So the parade of underclassmen continues here in the first round. Ray Allen, the junior, out of UConn. Bit of a surprise here, guys. But does this tell us something about what Minnesota might be thinking in the J.R. Ryder position? Well, yeah, you have uh, J.R. Ryder. You also have Doug West, two excellent players. Doug West can play small forward as well as the two-guard position. And that's why we say uh, we have no idea what Kevin McHale is doing. And we also know that Kevin McHale is brazen. 
and it also will get out there. He's been very creative since he has become the head of the basketball operation. Yes, if this is not what they need, they were looking at the point guard center position, and they drafted a great shooting guard. So this looks like it may be a, a trade in the works, or he just is very happy with Ray Allen. He, he's a, an excellent three-point shooter. He's a good kid, and he's a terrific finisher in the open floor. A Husky goes to the Timberwolves, the number five pick overall in the first round, and Ray Allen is with Craig. Well, Ernie, this is kind of a surprise. Everywhere that Ray Allen interviewed, he made a very favorable impression. Everybody loved him. Senator Cole wants him to run his campaign. I asked him where he was going. He said he didn't know. And here you picked by a team where you didn't even interview. It's very interesting because uh, Danielle Marshall went to Minnesota, and I never thought I'd make, make Minnesota, but Minnesota's a great city, and they have a great organization, and I'll be ready to play the next year. I talked to you in Chicago. You came off Player of the Year honors, had a great season, but you said you had to work on all aspects of your game. Why? Well, because going to the NBA, I think I have to step it up a notch everywhere. Um, I can't settle for, settle for the skills that I displayed in college. I think the NBA is another level, and I definitely have to improve a lot and work very hard. Well, this is a moment that brought your whole family together. Yes, it has, and um, it's great to see my mother and my father, all my sisters and my daughter back in the green room having a good time together. With the sixth pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Boston Celtics select... Antoine Walker from the University of Kentucky. I wish we had somebody on the set who knew something about this guy. Oh, we do. Rick, how's it make you feel to see this guy go? Uh, this young man came out of a, a brash high school young man and was the key to our championship. His maturity level and advancement was sensational. I'm so happy he's drafted by Boston. I was kind of hoping for Boston, the Clippers of New Jersey. I felt they, they needed him the most. He can play power forward, small forward, can even bring it up and play a little point forward. Could have speed it all for you, though? Oh, I'm so happy for him. This young man helped us win a championship, made all our dreams come true. Now, now they're crying backstage, the family, and everybody in Kentucky, including myself, are crying for other reasons because we hate to see this young man leave us. Any weakness in his game, do you feel? No, I really feel he's improved defensively. He can play both, but people don't realize he can play a little power forward. He has a great post-up game. Has to become a little bit more consistent shooter, but a great, great competitor. Wants to beat you at a game of horse. Just 19 years old right now, will turn 20 on August 12th. Antoine Walker picked by the Boston Celtics, and he's with Greg Singer. All right, first of all, Rick Patino, he's up there raving about your talents, talking about how great you were, what you did for Kentucky. Why couldn't he talk into staying? He tried. I mean, I, um, Coach knew it was best for me. The best situation for me was to come out right now. And, uh, you know, he, he, he bagged me 100%. He only played you 23 minutes a game. What happens now when you go to a 48-minute game with a 24-second shot clock? It's very difficult to play 30 minutes in our system. Uh, 23 minutes is a, is a long time in our system. You know, it's going to be a big adjustment for me going to the NBA, but I feel very confident in making that adjustment. On behalf of Larry Bird, who had a lot to do with your selection and all the Celtic fans, Compliments on the tailor, the green. It looks good on you already. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I, guess, I guess I made the right decision. And, uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have no idea I was going to the Celtics, but I feel very happy and, and with them picking me. Nolly Green is here, Kentucky Blue. Sorry, Rick, it's gone. <laughs> the commissioner is ready, as you with see. With the seventh pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Lorenzen Wright from the University of Memphis. Well, the record continues here on draft night. That's seven underclassmen in a row to start off the draft. Lorenzen Wright of Memphis. The latest, his dad is Herb. He's the head women's coach at Shelby State Community College in Memphis. Played some pro ball in Finland. His mom, Deborah. And Lorenzen Wright, the 6'11", 225-pound sophomore out of Memphis. The seventh pick in the first round by the Los Angeles Clippers. You know that at the center position, already, he only goes at 230 pounds. They're going to have to bulk him up if he's going to play there. Uh, you know that that Clipper team plays an awful lot of close games. They've improved. They have a lot of first-round picks. They, they play with a passion. But what they need is someone to get them over the hump in the last two minutes. The people who can get the shot block, get the key rebound, 
But once again, they're adding another quality type of a guy. Around Memphis, they called him the Howl for the noise he made on the two-hand two -hand tomahawk jam. And now the Howl is coming to the NBA in the L.A. Clipper uniform. He's with Frank Sager. Well, first of all, Lorenzo, the extent of the injury, I know obviously you don't feel it's serious. What have the doctors told you? What did the Clippers tell you? But, um, doctors all told me that, um, that I'll be all right and it'll heal on its own. All I have to do is take my time off and get prepared and get ready to play. And um, by the time of the season, I'll be ready to play and, you know, I'm going to work hard. Where you come from has a lot to do with the player you become. Memphis, a hotbed for basketball. What was it like growing up? What, what do you feel about that city? Well, there's a lot of good players coming out of Memphis. And still is coming out of Memphis now. Um, a bunch of a bunch of guys were coming out of high school. Tony Harris to name a few. And you know it's it's a it's a basketball city. What do you think about the Clippers? I think they have a very good team. I'm gonna work hard for them to try to win a championship down there. Work hard, that's the key. Hubie Brown says nobody works harder than you. You can't get a better compliment. Good luck. Right, thanks, I appreciate it. With the eighth pick in the 1996 NBA draft. The New Jersey Nets select Kerry Kittles from Villanova University. Well, if you're John Calipari, you gotta like what you hear in your own arena right here. Fans seem to like that one. Well, they know that they're getting a proven score. They had an opportunity to watch him play in the Big East here in this building against Seton Hall. So you know that you get a guy who's been able to put up over 30 points and over 35 points on some nights. Now, is he an unselfish player? Yes. Can he score in the open floor? Great quickness, finishing ability, and he's got range. And good defensive player, good size. You can't post him up. He's a legitimate 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6, and he fits the needs of the New Jersey Nets. Their weaknesses, they can't shoot from the perimeter. He opens up the inside game and stops the double downs. Most fans came prepared, thinking Kerry Kittles might be the first pick of the New Jersey Nets, and there you see. Another Villanova graduate, Rory Sparrow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and for the first time, the New Jersey fans get a look at their first round pick, Kerry Kittles. With the ninth pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Dallas Mavericks select Samaki Walker from the University of Louisville. Hey, best win of the night, without question so far, belongs to Samaki Walker. <laughs> the Louisville Cardinals sophomore, another early entry candidate. So nine picks have been made, eight have been early entries. And Rick Pitino, you're saying this is a guy maybe underrated in some service. Very much so. This is a great pick. Matter of fact, I called him just three, four weeks ago and told him it was a great idea for him to come out. Uh, right after Denny Crump called Antoine Walker. So this is a... <laughs> this is really a terrific pick. So Maki Walker is because we haven't seen a lot of him uh, because of some of the problems that, that went on this year for him. This is a great pick for Dallas. It fits their needs along with the rebounding, strong, bulky player they need inside. Yeah, they need a physical force, Ernie. This guy is a legit 6'9", 240 pounds. Among the things that Dallas is trying to get done right now, some turmoil in Big D in the past week with Jim Jackson and the rest, but Samaki Walker is the pick of the Mavs and is with Greg. Well, and Hubie Brown says this guy doesn't have to change anything. I say congratulations to the <laughs> Dallas Mavericks. First of all, what do you expect to accomplish in your rookie year? Um, first of all, I like to accomplish. There's a lot of young guys coming out, and uh, I think there's a lot of speculations with people thinking that, you know, we have a lot to prove in order to help make the Dallas organization a better program and help make and represent the league. People around the league were raving about your workouts. Did you have a good one in Dallas? What do you remember? What was it like? Uh, after uh, talking to them, they think I really had a good workout, and uh, they were pretty impressed, and um, I guess they thought so. That's why I guess I'm here, which I'm happy to be. I like to thank the Dallas organization. You left your derby happy before you met with the commissioner. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Mavericks now, so this is uh, it's more important. All right, congratulations. Back to the set. With the 10th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Indiana Pacers select Eric Dampier from Mississippi State University. 
the first center selected in the 1996 NBA draft. Eric Dampier of Mississippi State. Another guy that Rick Pitino will know quite well. Very Kentucky's battles with Mississippi State. Very strong, powerful basketball player. Certainly uh, surprises me a little bit with the pick. Uh, what remains to be seen, they need they need backup help, obviously, physically, what Yubi just mentioned. But this young man is powerful, very strong. Weakness, obviously, is not going to shoot great from the foul line. But they made themselves an excellent pick. Now, how do they fit him into their system? That's a good question. How do you do it? Well, first of all, Rick Smith never plays during the 82 games, never plays more than 28 to 30 minutes. Milwaukee conveys the draft rights to Stevon... Stefan Marbury to Minnesota in exchange for the draft rights to Ray Allen and a future first round draft pick. With the 11th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Todd Fuller from North Carolina State University. So no centers were chosen in the first nine picks of the draft, and then we go back-to-back -back centers with Eric Dampier going to Indiana and Tom Fuller going to Golden State with the 11th pick. Bernie, you, got, you have to look at this and say they were very high on Fuller right from the beginning. Uh, you're dealing with a guy who was overshadowed in the ACC by Duncan and Wallace. During his career, he improved every year. He averaged over 20 points this year. He's mobile enough that he can play two positions for you. Kevin Willis is a free agent at the center position. Ronnie Cycli is still under contract. But what you're getting here is a young guy who has really improved this game from year to year to year. Naturally, he's got to bulk up a little bit if he's going to play strictly center for them. But... He, once again, now you look at that Golden State, when that team is healthy, they have a lot of guys with talent. Yeah, and he may have an affinity for playing defense, too. Bobby Jones coached him in high school. Let's get back to the trade here real quick, the Marbury deal. Your take on this thing, and, and Marbury likes Kevin Garnett. Now he goes to Minnesota. Well, it, it's, it's great for Minnesota. We talked about a possible trade at that time. Uh, we also brought out the point that Milwaukee life, likes Ray Allen. They needed range. Rick brought out the point. They already have Sherman Douglas, and he has two more years on his contract. So, you know, I, I could see it happen. And, and they really love the character. Not, not that they didn't love the character of Stephon Marbury. Ray Allen really impressed them. And the other thing they, they looked at, Stephon Marbury stays three years. He's from a big city. Does he still want to stay in Milwaukee when the three years are up? And, and that has to be a factor. With the 12th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Vitaly Potapenko from Wright State University. Wright State University by way of Kiev, Ukraine. The Ukraine train, they call him. You look at him right now, Ernie, and you say he's sleek. When he was playing during a college season, he weighed 310 pounds. By the time he went to the camp in Chicago, he was down to 270. No player in the Chicago draft helped themselves more than that young man. He was one of the top scorers in the camp. He was the only center who could score with his back to the basket in every single session. Great hands, good shooting touch, and all business. And definitely we have a weight look book, book on the horizon very shortly. <laughs> With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. A coming out party for the high school kid. Kobe Bryant meeting with the approval of that Charlotte fan in attendance here. And Hubie, this is a guy whose stock has risen every time he's tried out. People like this kid. Well, everyone writing when he first came out, well, he's going to have to bulk up. This guy is 200 pounds at six foot six. He is an offensive whiz. He's very, very talented. He has all pro moves. 
And when when you you look at him, you're talking about a young man with range. He can go off the dribble. He can get his shot. And in every place that he worked out, nothing but raves. No one talking about any shortness or a weakness in his game. Jerry West told me today that greatness lies ahead for this young man. His dad, Joe Jellybean Bryant, was the 14th pick when he was selected. Kobe, number 13. Let's go to Greg Sager. Well, Kobe, your dad can tell you about the NBA. You can watch every playoff game on TV. But until you go through the workouts, experience yourself, you don't get that firsthand. What was it like for the tryouts? What did you learn? Well, I learned that you have to work hard. You have to approach the game with a serious mindset. Uh, There's a step up from high school, and I understand that. So, therefore, every time I step on a basketball court, I'm going to put a strong effort out there on the floor. I'm, I'm not going to leave anything on the floor. You had the grades. You had the scores to go to college. Why the NBA? It's the ultimate challenge. You know, if I was 40 years old and I'm sitting back and I'm looking back at my career, if I went to college and played the NBA, maybe I had a great career, maybe not. And I'm still having that down in my mind. Could I have answered that challenge? Could I have responded to the challenge of the NBA? And that's something that I didn't want to have on my, on my shoulders, so I just really accepted it. Here goes Kevin Garnett sitting where you are. Have you talked to him? What advice has he given you? He's talked to me. He told me a lot of stories, a lot of experiences that he's going through. But all in all, he said it has to be your own decision. You know, he said that I, he can give me a lot of pros and cons, but it ultimately has to be my decision. Well, here's a copy of The Sting, the official book of the Charlotte Hornets with your new coach, Dave Collins, on the cover. Do your homework before you show up at the Hive. Thank you very much. I, I, I'll make sure I will. Right, congratulations, <laughs> Ernie. With the 14th pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Sacramento Kings select Predrag Stojakovic from Pau in Greece. If he looks young, he is. He's 19 years old, just turned 19. He's playing some ball in Greece. Give me your thoughts on the talents of Fred Rock Stojakovic. Well, it's interesting because in Chicago when he came in to work out, uh, there are not, and a lot of people like his talent. They feel he's a small forward at that size. He's an offensive player. He played in Yugoslavia before he became a citizen in Greece. He has played there, and guys, you have, you have to look at Sacramento this way. Billy Owens has an injury which they have to cover themselves for. They were sold on this guy right from the get-go. With the 15th pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select Steve Nash from the University of Santa Clara. Steve Nash, the first Bronco to go in the first round since when, you ask? 1969, but Ogden to Philadelphia. You remember that, Hubie? I sure do. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one of my dearest friends, Carl Williams, was an assistant coach back then uh, and then became the head coach, now the athletic director. I know the Broncos are very happy. Uh, this young man, they recruited him from Victoria, Canada. He plays on a Canadian national team. Uh, just an outstanding young man. Now you say, why Phoenix? Well, Phoenix must protect themselves. Kevin Johnson has already given the news that he's going to retire after one more year. Uh, they also are have involved before this draft in some potential trades using Elliot Perry uh, as a throw-in with a certain guy by the initial CB. Now who knows whether uh, that is going to happen. So what you're seeing here is Phoenix protecting himself. This is an organization that did a magnificent job over the last two years. He sees the floor, he can make the play, and then he has three-point range. Steve Nash going to the Phoenix Suns, and we go to Craig. Uh, you know, Steve, normally, I know you're happy. You normally don't like to compare players to those currently in the NBA, but with you, the comparisons don't stop. I must ask for the comparison between you and Kurt Rambis, the other Santa Clara <laughs> Pro. <laughs> well, uh, we're similar in size, I think. Uh, no. uh, you know, honest, honestly, it's just exciting for me to, to be here. I think that uh, Santa Clara hasn't had a pro since Rambis, and it's exciting for the school. And I want to thank Santa Clara, St. Michael's High School, our beautiful junior high, all my coaches, my family, and my friends. They've done a lot for me along the way, and I couldn't have done it without any of them. Monty Blake, the NBA's director of scouting, always talks about the importance of playing in these postseason camps. What was your mentality? What were your thoughts going into Phoenix and the Desert Classic when you performed so well? Uh, well, there's a lot of pressure there because you never know where you're going to go, and I think people are always speculating this and that. And, uh, you know, I just went out there with a 
positive attitude and try to control things that I can control and not worry about the extracurricular stuff. So I was really uh, pleased with my performance in Phoenix and definitely helped me. Congratulations, Cotton picked his man. With the 16th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Tony Delp from the University of Kentucky. With the 17th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Portland Trailblazers select Jermaine O'Neal from Eau Claire High School in South Carolina. Jermaine is not here. With the 19th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the New York Knicks select John Wallace from Syracuse University. A native of Rochester, New York, the 18th pick in the first round of the 1996 NBA draft. Sounds like Kentucky just won the national championship in here, doesn't it? The place is rocking as John Wallace of the Orange goes to the Knicks. Well, it was well worth the wait for this young man because he got the only bad thing about this is on one side he's got to get hit by Anthony Mason, yeah. and the other side he's got to get hit by Charles Oakley. <laughs> Outside of that, the New York Knicks and Jeff Van Gundy are very lucky. They are because they, they need to rebuild their front line on their second unit. Because if you come with Mason, Ewing, and Oakley, you need to have the depth factor. It definitely hurt them in the playoffs. They did not get enough scoring up front with the substitute. Let's enjoy this moment as he makes his appearance before the fans here in New Jersey. The New York Knicks first first round pick. In the 1996 NBA Draft, the New York Knicks select Walter McCarty from the University of Kentucky. Wow, three cats in the first round. First time since 92 that a school has had three first round picks. Beaming with pride to my left is Rick Pitino, and with good reason. And, and now you know why we won the national championship. <laughs> uh, Walter McCarty is a 10-star person on a five-star scale. The New York Knicks at 18 and 19 are doing magnificent. I don't just say that because I coach this young man. He's a legit 6'10". He gives them what they need from the perimeter. He can knock down the three-point shot, the mid-range shot, his low post game. I, I always used to say when he got hit and went to the ground, I said, look, God forbid someday you get hit by Ewing, Mason, or Oakley. He's now going to find out he'll never forgive me for making that statement. <laughs> To the rousing cheers of some New York Knicks fans, Walter McCarty makes his entrance to the stage. This young man does a mile in 446. McCarty and Wallace could be projected late lottery picks. And now the Knicks get them both at 18 and 19. Both have a very strong work ethic. I think the Knicks are doing great. With the 20th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Zydrunas Ilgauskas from Lithuania. Well, with those two picks, the Cleveland Cavaliers definitely lead the league in first round syllables. Zydrunas Ilgauskas of Lithuania, Vitaly Potapenko was already taken with the 12th pick in the first round as Cleveland tries to get bigger, and they're doing exactly that, you uh, and, and, and you know, and it's good because they're big, they're strong, they're young. This guy can score. Uh, he's been out with an injury for a couple of seasons, but he came back. He helped his team win the Lithuanian championship uh, for the third straight season. He'll be on their Olympic team, so you know that he's going to get a great experience over the summer. And just to refresh your memory, 26 points and 19 rebounds and four blocks in that tour in 94 against Kentucky. Just thought you'd like to Thanks, know. James. You probably already have that in the memory bank. <laughs> Let's go back down to Crane. Well, here one minute, train to the next. That's life in the NBA. I guess you find out in a heck of a hurry, Stefan. You had the one hat on, you've been traded to Minnesota, but I know deep down you're awfully happy you didn't play with Kevin Garnett. Have you talked to him by the phones to pick whether the trade were not? Yeah, I just now spoke to him. I mean, he, he was just as happy as I was. He was screaming. You know, I mean, I'm really happy. I can't say too much about it. I'm getting to play with my friend. I'm getting to play where I wanted to play, and I'm 
going to be surrounded around a great uh, bunch of people as far as the staff. When the trade was announced, did your mom start crying all over again? No, nah, she didn't. She just was like shocked. <laughs> you know, now I'll be playing with Kevin and knowing that she knows Kevin, you know, she feels even better. Congratulations. First of all, Ray, the pick was made. You were surprised. I was a little bit surprised. I told you they loved you in Milwaukee. Have you talked to the Bucks since the trade was announced? Uh, yes, I just finished talking to them and they're very excited and, and ready for me to come to Milwaukee tomorrow. What about the emotions of waiting to figure out where you're picked, then you're surprised, then you're traded? What was it like for you? Well, uh, it's kind of it's nerve-wracking. Going back and forth, thinking you might play on this side of the United States or then you might think you have an idea of going to pick Canada. But otherwise, for me, I tried to just uh, stay low-key about it and wait for this night to happen so I can get a better feeling and understand where I end up. At this point in time, Murray, I think we have to say it's a great trade for both guys and both teams. They both got what they wanted.